Hi all, my name is Joe Ganchi uh, of eLearningJoe.com. I have been creating eLearning since I was in college. I got my computer science degree in 1983, and ever since then I have been creating eLearning using a lot of different authoring tools along the way. Some of them very powerful, other ones not so much, but quite a few in these last several years. It's hard to believe it's been that long. <laughs> I still love what I do. Um, one of the, the, the biggest um, discussions that go on nowadays is the difference between Captivate and Storyline. Uh, they look similar in some ways and they are quite different in other ways. So I decided to post a list of those things I really love about Storyline that are missing from Captivate on LinkedIn. And then I did um, the same for Captivate. I listed all the things I love about Captivate that are missing from Storyline. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate then those features that I love in Storyline that are missing from Captivate. And I prepared a little demo of each of these items here. Sliders, dials, layers, scenes, automatic scrolling panels, orienting objects to motion path, triggers for object collision, performing an action when the timeline reaches a certain time, trigger checking the state of an object, object dragged over in Storyline is easier than in Captivate, and any object in Storyline can be made interactive light boxes and a really great online community. That last one goes without saying, I guess it doesn't really something I have to demonstrate, but the others I feel like I should. By the way, I'll continue to update this document as I find new items to talk about. Uh, meanwhile, let's go ahead and take a look at those items I've listed for storyline that I really do love. Okay, so start with sliders. Sliders are really cool because you can do all sorts of things with sliders. And these are just two examples here where I'm changing the state of this gentleman here by moving the slider back and forth. The sliders can be, of course, customized a great deal in terms of the look and feel of them and also in terms of the values that you associate with them. Here's another example here where the learner is able to manipulate uh, the year at which the graph should stop so that, in fact, uh, the learner feels as if he or she is in control of what's happening here. Dials are similar, uh, except of course there are dial shapes instead, so uh, being able to turn a dial can be very, very useful. Both sliders and dials are useful items that I really would love to have. I can do them through JavaScript in Story in uh, Captivate, but here in Storyline it's so much simpler and right, you know, straightforward. So um, dials and sliders are the top two right now that I consider wonderful about Storyline. Um, then we get into layers, and of course, and layers have been around for a while, and yet um, they don't always get their due. Uh, they are really, really good items. Um, so in this case, for instance, I have a challenge to the learner, and each time the learner answers one of these, it's going to show a different layer in which the uh, video will be a feedback, and of course, there's also some text and a button uh, to try again. Go back to the base layer and so on. So each of these is a separate layer and that way um, it, it uh, works really well. Okay, so the ability to set a state as well and then remember it later is really cool too. So here, for instance, uh, the same as before, I'm, I'm moving the slider here, but notice that in each case, of course, he is a di in a different position and so, and so on. This time when I move it, I'm not only changing the state of the man on the screen, but I'm also saving uh, the state of mind or the state of the, 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 the position in a variable and then being able to show that on the next slide. So you left Edwin looking confident, for instance. If I go back and change that to this one here where he's coughing, you know, hey, you left Edwin coughing, etc. And each of these is set up that way. And then, by the way, I'll go back and show you how this was done in a source if you're um, inclined to stick around to take a look at that. Okay, scrolling in motion paths, really cool options. I like the ability to be able to place a window on the screen and insert just about anything in it and then be able to scroll up and down. That's a really nice feature. I can kind of do that with a web object, even though you know the contents may be local, but still this again is so much easier and straightforward in Storyline. Orienting to a path like so uh, is a very cool feature. I in playing around with this. I was a little disappointed that for instance, I could not set up a multiple segment animation where um, I have a, a segment going from one city to another straight line and then from there another straight line to a different city and so on uh, and still have the car orient itself correctly. 
having said that, I think with a little more effort uh, and maybe some some ideas from you guys, if you have any ideas regarding that, it I could get it to work. Okay, but still, very cool to, that the, the automobile here is staying oriented correctly as it goes around the circle. Object collision, same idea here, except this time I'm checking to see if the car is going to hit the poor lady that's there on the road. And as soon as it reaches that point uh, and sees that it's going to collide, it stops. So very good feature there. Um, although at times it looks like she sto uh, the automobile stopped short. Looks like in this case... Yeah, maybe it went on her feet a little bit. Who knows? <laughs> um, items that are timed to the timeline as well. Same example here, except this time I'm putting up uh, city names as the car goes around the country, if you will. And those are all based on the time uh, on the timeline. Again, something I can show you here in a sec. Um, drag over options. This is one where, you know, when I just drag this over, I can have something happen on the screen and it could be anything really i'm just using a big arrow to point to the, to the image um, when i'm doing this and again this is doable but certainly not as easily as straightforward as this is light boxes are really nice too uh, here i have an example of where you are uh, clicking on different cities and in each case, it's going to open up a light box with uh, the video from YouTube. It's actually well, welcome to Italy this week. It's actually it's uh, embedded from YouTube, so it's coming directly from YouTube. Uh, in each case, so I go to Milan, I go to Florence, uh, same kind of thing here. And if I go to Rome, it'll show the Rome light box. Very nice feature. I like light boxes a lot in Captivate. Uh, sorry, in Storyline, it can be sort of done in Captivate, but again, not as easily as in Storyline. So those are my top features that I like. I think I've covered them all. Let's take a look. Um, I've talked about sliders and dials and layers, of course. Um, oh, you know what? Scenes, of course. Well, now that I'm going to go back to the um, source, I can show you a couple of other things here that I like, uh, which is, of course, scenes, which are more easily seen in the um, uh, source. Although you can see here that the way that the menu is set up is also by scene. So that's a nice um, a, a feature as well. Uh, Captivate has groups, which are sort of similar, but a little easier, more elegant in Storyline uh, as well. Okay, so if I were to jump out to Storyline now and to show you this, you can kind of see that in the story view, I have f these five different scenes. Now this one here with the light boxes, I've hidden from the menu in the... Um, output so that it, you know, the learner doesn't click on that to go directly to a light box. No, they have to go there through this mechanism here. I could have left them visible, but no, I didn't want to do that. I wanted the learner to choose a city from the map and then have the light box appear. So uh, even though this is a, a scene here um, with these four different uh, city videos, they are not showing directly in the menu. Okay, so in terms of the way the sliders work, well, I think you guys already know about this, and so I'm not going to uh, go through it too much, uh, except to say that in each case, a slider and a dial is something that you can set up the initial start value, the initial end value, the initial um, value. <laughs> uh, in other words, the starting value, the ending value, and what is the initial value is set to. If I set it to 3, the... Um, the thumb would have appeared in the middle of the lever to begin with. And then, of course, the step. In other words, how many, uh, how much is it going to jump each time that you move it? Uh, so, okay, so that is pretty straightforward because then I can check on that to determine. And you can see right here that in this case, what I'm saying is that um, in the case of, uh, of um, when a slider moves to one, I'm going to set the state of Edwin to normal which is the, the, the default state. And then if um, it, it, the, the slider is left, goes to two, it will show this state here, three, four, and five. And that's pretty straightforward right there. Um, the dial, uh, sorry, the slider two works exactly the same way. And the dials actually work the same way as well. So there's really not much difference between them, which is great because once you do one, you know, the rest come pretty easily, especially if you're doing something similar like these. Um, okay, then when we were looking at here at the, um, the this was no, no big deal here. All, we, all I did here was to insert a, uh, a scrolling panel and uh, right here, and then I showed text and an image inside of it. This oriented path, the only thing that 
um, you need to remember here is that once I set up the animation that I needed to also choose to orient the shape to the path and that way it stayed true to the path. The object collision item here is set up so that when um, it says here the pause the timeline when the shape intersects with the character one Ma um, Marie. So this is Marie right here and as soon as these inter uh, in in connect to each other, in other words as soon as they intersect, that's uh, I'm stopping the timeline right there. This one here um, is the one where things appear and of course these are using both uh, layers and also they're using um, the time on the timeline. So in, in essence here what I'm saying is that when the time reaches 2.75 seconds I'm going to show layer DC 4.25 LA 5.75 is going to be uh, Seattle. Pretty straightforward there too. Okay, so that's about it for that one. The light box idea, um, pretty simple. This one here is the drag over one. Uh, and here again, it's a question of what you want to show. And, and, and because I'm putting these in layers, the difference between this one and the last one is that each of these layers here is set up so that um, it will, in, in essence, hide the uh, uh, other layers. So if I were to uh, take a look at this one, it's, um, it's going to hide the other slide layers. But in the prior one, well, the same thing goes for that one. Um, which one did I do differently? There is one that I did differently. Uh, it might be, oh yeah, it's back here where I did the uh, the, the circle with this one here. Um, each of these is set up so that it does not hide the other slide layers. That way the cities stay up uh, as, the, as the car goes around the circle. Okay, so that is it for that one. And then light boxes, as I said, are four individual slides and so those are called up by having the um, the uh, these clicked and as soon as you click one of these it's going to show uh, the light box this one light box that one and the reason why it's so simple in the storyline is that all you have to do is say bring up this light box even though it's on another slide it's going to overlay it on top of the current one and um, and then you have choices to make and one of them the default one which I've chosen here is to simply uh, be able to dismiss it by clicking. So that's it. Those are the things I really love about Storyline. Uh, I might dig up more, in which case I'll add it to the list and then add more uh, to this video or at least maybe create a second video regarding that. But for now, that is the thing. Those are the things I really love about Storyline. Hope you enjoyed that.